Well, here's another project. <clears throat> so far, I got the tracker tractor. And I picked up the Banshee a little while ago. And, um, I don't... I think this mower's been on the channel a little bit. Maybe. Um, I got this thing, I think, six or seven years ago. I, uh, sold my first real four-wheeler, <clears throat> which was a Yamaha Badger. Um, sold that. And, uh, got this, uh, I'll throw a picture in of what it looks like when it's actually together, right? I took it all apart yesterday, um, because we are making some changes. Um, right now it's got a Kohler command on it. Uh, there's no, the way Kohler does it, um, marking the engines is a sticker on the blower, on the shroud. Well, it doesn't have that. I don't know what it is. 18 through 30 horse, the motors are pretty much the same. Um, it's not a 30 horse, I know that, like factory, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure, well, I've taken it apart a long time ago. I think I can throw a picture of that in, you know, somewhere here, um, too. But it's got stock rods, pistons, stock cast flywheel. Um, pretty sure stock cam. It's got heavier valve springs and billet retainers in it and, you know, that junk. So it revs higher, but nothing on it to support the higher revs. So, and I'm too cheap to actually build it because this flywheel to get a build of aluminum one's 330 bucks. Set of rods is 180 bucks plus the bearings is another 50. So you know it gets a, these mo these lawnmower engines get really expensive to build. Um, I believe this is a 674 cc. I'm just gonna guess because um, they cover the pretty big range. I think that's what it is. Um, but right now, what I'm doing, uh, this project is we're got, this is an LT250R bottom end, an 8586, five speed. Uh, we picked this up for free. Um, the bottom end's good. The case has been JB welded before, but it's fine. The clutch and tranny works. Um, I, uh, carefully removed the connecting rod. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is just bolt a plate over this. I'll cut out a plate to bolt over this, put a little oil in there. And basically this is just going to be a transmission, not in the motor anymore. So our sprocket's going to go on here and then another sprocket where it would normally be to the rear axle. Um, so the setup on this lawnmower right now, we have a vertical shaft engine. Uh, it's belt drive to the back of that clutch pedal is a belt clutch like a mower. Um, I have no idea what kind of homemade right angle gearbox this is but it works i'm not going to touch it it's fine so it's got uh double 40 chain to the back uh, i'm just going to switch it to 520 or 50 chains that's cheaper um because that's the kind of sprocket i can get on this so 520 but it works with 50 chain 50 chain just a little wide um basically i uh punched out all the rivets on the flywheel so this is basically adapting the tapered shaft to something I can attach a sprocket to, so I'll probably get a sprocket, press it on there, take weld it on, and that's going to hook up. I'm probably going to have to put, cut a keyway into this shaft, put the sprocket in here, go there. Um, I might have to move the rear axle back because this gearbox has a reduction, um, as well as the front pulley is smaller than the pulley on the gearbox, um, so that leaves a bit you know, of gearing. Cause this is one to one to the rear axle. This thing's a single. <clears throat> this thing's a single speed, and it will do 50 miles an hour. <clears throat> 50 miles an hour at about 5,000 RPM. I don't want to rev that motor to 5,000 RPM because it's gonna blow up if I keep doing that. So I built a rev limiter box right here. Um, I just 3D printed that thing. It's, it runs on an Arduino setup. There's just the Hall Effect sensor here. Um, that mounts, well, where that hole is, it goes into the hole, and that reads off the flywheel magnet right there. That reads the RPM. I mean, it works just like a, it sounds just like a normal rev limiter when it, you hit it. It's just, you can change the speed at which it cuts the ignition. That's all it's going to do. It works. I had it on there for a long time. That's also going to be controlling our quick shifter. So, uh, I believe... Uh, 
what is it? Uh, Dynojet sells the kits for that or whatever for their fuel injection junk. Well, I'm doing my own with the Arduino. Um, this, you know, is a five speed. There's just going to be a shifter right here. Uh, this cover goes over the whole center. Um, but there's just going to be a shifter right here because it's on the, the right side of the steering wheel is a throttle. It's going to be a shifter right there. So it's basically going to have two micro switches on it. Uh, when you bang the shifter, it's just going to cut the ignition for a split second to make that go into gear so you don't have to get off the throttle. Um, as far as performance stuff on this motor, uh, I'm not going to spend all that money. I'd love to, actually, because these, these motors can make 60, 70 horsepower, but that takes, you know, it'll take about three grand worth of work. Not going to do that. Um, it's got a... I think, I think it's a six degree advanced uh, timing key. But basically all I'm doing, I ported the intake. Um, these intakes are terrible from the factory. Um, they're basically all, the heads are terrible too. I'll show that in a second. But that is all smooth out. This was just pretty much like down right angles in there. So you can see a little bit of flashing in there I couldn't get to. But, you know, that's there. Um. Up in there, you can see that little bump there. That's from where the bolt goes through. I cut it as much as I could without making it too thin. Um, see, these, these runners aren't equal. This side flows so much better. Uh, it's just because this gets choked down so much. So there's that. Uh, the cylinder heads, I'm just going to port match. I already did the matching on here with the gasket. I just have to... I do the cylinder heads now. You can see how bad these are. These are literally just down right angle into there. Um, you can pick up a couple CFM by pushing that valve guide up. I'm not gonna mess with it. I I did as much as I could in the intake without epoxying. I don't have any epoxy. I'm too cheap to buy it. <clears throat> so. Not gonna bother epoxying nothing. I could probably make it a little better if I did. Um, but it's not worth my time to actually do anything with that intake with the stock valves. Uh, they're just too small. Bigger valves, the valve job, that that's you know, it's just not worth it. Um, I am gonna be switching, I think I'm gonna be switching to a 34 PJ key in carb. This is the carb that I had on it right here. I believe it's a Lakota mod. It's somebody board it somebody board it out i think it's a lakota carb um yeah it it's all right but this is really designed for pulling so the throttle response isn't great um this jet which is the intermediate fuel it has the idle intermediate and then the adjustable main jet but um that's hurting in there so it's not it doesn't run it runs pretty good with this but not great this is a 32 mil, so going to the 34 mil should help a bit. Um, yeah. I'm hoping to get better throttle response as well. Okay, I moved the mower up into the garage here. Um, out of the barn, because we don't have air out in the barn, and our power out there is not good enough to run the welder. So, um, I started taking some things apart. I uh, figured out that this homemade looking right angle gearbox is actually the diff out of an MG midget. Because um, I always knew so part of it wasn't homemade. I, I don't have a light, but this, I don't know if it'll show up. It's not going to show up. Well, you can kind of see that's a aluminum casting. Well, somebody just made their own pan for it. But it's it, I, there's a casting number on the side of there. I looked it up. It's from an MG Midget. Uh, so I took the chain off. It's a double 40 chain kind of deal here. Um, these sprockets are way too nice for me. These taper locks. I love these taper locks, but I just... Oh, they're just too much money. They're nice. Too mushy. So basically what I'm going to have to do... Like I said before, let's get a sprocket hook from there to there. I got to still find out what the gear ratios are in this tranny. It's kind of hard to find for these 85-86 motors. 
Newer ones are really easy to find. But um, basically, if I keep all of this, like from here to here, one to one, whatever this would be, it, it would do 50, maybe a little more miles an hour, but that's revved right out. I need to add some kind of higher gearing in between the diff and the rear axle here so I don't have to rev this thing out as high because I have five gears to work with now. I know on the newer LT motors, the sixth gear is like 0.8, so it's an overdrive, um, which would be perfect. I wouldn't have to change nothing. Um, and I'm not going to let this set in. Um, very limited on space here. I, I don't think that's going to be enough because... I don't know what they normally run, maybe a 12 tooth, 14 tooth in the front. This is going to have to end up being one to one. This is a one and a quarter inch axle. So I can only get so small of a sprocket on this axle for 520 chain. So, uh, I don't know. Hopefully that'll work. That'll end up being one to one. I took and made the, um, the little sheet metal plate to block off the crankcase. I got some 5W20 in there. Um, we got our, we got our chain, um, we got our, our new sprocket, I just took, I showed the flywheel thing, I took that, I welded that on, I gotta get a deal to hold that, that's on there, uh, I got the sprocket slid on our axle there, um, bearings back in, that sprocket was a lot of money, it was $20, um, so I just gotta make mounts for the gearbox and get it hooked up and we'll be all set. Okay, we are finally back. Um, man, I've been through three different cameras on this video. It's going to be all over the place. Um, last time I showed you that I got my plate put on the case. Um, yeah, I forgot to fill more stuff. Getting to be a common thing here. Um, anyway, I cobbled together some brackets for this. This is mounted in there. Um, we had some chain laying around. So you can see how this whole deal is going to work. Um, so there's the belt. Goes to, to the diff. And then that goes to the crank. This is where the flywheel used to be. And then you got your regular sprocket to the axle there. Now we have a 5-speed transmission. This is the old LT250R bottom end. Uh, that's all mounted. And now, uh, well, yeah, carbs on there. I have been working on this center section which kind of covers the diff um, this is like my second time ever TIG welding aluminum they're there they're not good but they're there um, this goes over the center section there um, I'm, I just have to grind this down and smooth this all out so it's all one unit um, you know it's the same thing on the inside because um, I didn't make this originally well, that was done with a spool gun, it looks like. But anyway, that is where we're at. Okay, I use a flap wheel. Clean that up. I will paint that eventually. Um, the main thing, just like so I want to drive this thing, see how it works, um, we have to get our chain tensioners. So, this is this little, I don't, even, I don't know what this is from. But, this guy is going to be going to do. Uh. Okay, the GoPro died, so I'm back on my phone. This video is going to be so all over the place. Um, anyway, this is from a Toyota Sienna belt tensioner here. Um, I got it on a pivot uh, back there. There's two nuts welded onto the bracket in there. Um, so, I know that, you know, hard bearing race on chains, not great. But we're not going to have it too tight. It's just going to be like that. Um, it's just when you decelerate, it's going to push on this. But when it's when we're going forward anyway, this is going to have slack in it. And this will be tight here. So um, Basically, that's, that's actually got a pin put into there. Um, we're going to take and take and make a little, uh, little thing there to hold that up. Adjustable. Just, I'm going to leave some slack in it. Just nothing crazy. 
Um, I'm probably going to make a similar similar deal for this setup. So, yeah. It's coming along alright. Might actually be able to give it a test drive today. It, that would be mint. Just mint. I still have to get the throttle cable in this whole carb deal set up nice, but we'll get there. Okay, once again, I didn't film anything. Um, it's sort of back together. I got a nut with a pin and a hole drilled in the shifter shaft there, um, which runs alongside there real close to the chain up to this. I'll make everything look nice eventually, but that shifts nice like that and everything so that's down or that's be pushed to upshift pull back to downshift it's all working it's all hooked up oh i don't even think i showed the the chain tensioner thing that's mounted there and then this bolt just pushes on that chain tensioner to raise it and lower it down there, and the, this one was way more cobbled, but it works, so it's fine. First test drive. Tomorrow, I just got to mount the seat and kind of get some junk together, back together in the front, and we'll be all set.